I went to Australia in 1961 uh, on a four-year assignment to the New India Assurance Company. Uh, at that time, Australia had a white Australia policy, so migration was not an option. It was a temporary assignment. Since then, uh, things changed. Uh, white Australia policy was abandoned over time. And I also changed careers and I joined the IT industry, working initially for IBM for 15 years, then Fujitsu for 24 years. I became chairman and CEO of Fujitsu in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and now I have a relationship with TCS. I chair an advisory board for TCS in Australia and New Zealand. Connecting India to Australia became a very, very personal thing because you know, most Australians had not met or seen or dealt with someone of Indian origin. Many, when they met my wife, would have been the first time they saw a woman in a sari. Uh, so one naturally became, you know, a, a kind of ambassador for, for India and Australia and then from Australia to India. So because of that, I got involved heavily in Australia-India matters. I chaired the Australia-India Business Council. Uh, and uh, for that work and other work I had done with government and policy on immigration and multicultural affairs, uh, I was awarded the Pravasi Bharatiya Saman Award. Uh, now about seven or eight years ago. And so that, as a result of that, I, I, I've been coming regularly to the PBD. And then I was also appointed to the Indian Prime Minister's uh, Global Advisory Council. I think it would be fair to say that there is, uh, you know, some anxiety. Uh, I, I'm sure that that's the case in Australia and I imagine it's in the case of other parts of the world. A lot of it is, is just something that has happened globally after the GFC. People are much more cautious. Uh, also, I mean, India is having its challenges. You know, the rates of growth have dropped off. They're still, still very high. But so there is, I think, a, a little bit of uh, caution creeping in. Uh, but India, I think, still is a very attractive place to invest in. But, it, but people need to be encouraged, India has to be promoted, and people need a lot of help. I became aware of OIFC partly because of my links to the PBD anyway. Also, I did bring some uh, small entrepreneurial Australian companies to, to India, and the first port of call for me was OIFC, you know, to meet the CEO, to meet uh, some of her specialist staff. And I know that the people I brought with me found it very, very beneficial. India is challenging. India is complex. It's huge. So people get, uh, you know, they need some sort of hand-holding. They need to be shown the way so that the process is simplified and they get quality answers to the questions they ask because they need clarification. And OIFC is in a very good position to do that. And I know it does it very well. It's become stronger since we ran a regional PBD in Sydney and since OIFC came out there. But I think that uh, the work has just begun. Mm -hmm.